What if Kevin Garnett got traded to the Phoenix Suns? Now, I came across this what if the other day. Originally, I was going to make a separate Kevin Garnett what if, but I realized that this one would be very, very interesting. It's definitely not the most realistic or well thought out what if that I've ever seen, but it was just something that I found and I think you guys might find it really entertaining to watch as a viewer. In saying that, I will add bits and pieces to this what if scenario since some of it's really really weird like he brings Shaquille O'Neal back to LA and that would never happen. So I add bits and I take bits out so just keep in mind this is not realistic. If you want to watch some more realistic what ifs, definitely go to my channel, check the what ifs out. But this what if is not made by me, I didn't write the script, I'm reading off an article by Sam Quinn which I'll drop down below in the description so if anything seems a little odd and not realistic, don't blame me, I'm reading off an article, I just thought that this was an interesting video to make and if you guys want to see some more what ifs my style then let me know down below in the comment section what what if I should do. Anyway let's get on to the video and here is what if Kevin Garnett was traded to the Phoenix Suns. It takes them an entire summer. It takes Boston acquiring Ray Allen and Kobe getting antsy in LA. It takes losing to the Spurs again. It takes months of rumors, back and forth. But on July 30th, 2007, the Phoenix Suns agreed to trade Amari Stoudemire to the Minnesota Timberwolves for Kevin Garnett. KG promises to bring Phoenix its first championship and his presence pays immediate dividends. Free agents James Posey and Eddie House agree to discounted deals to join Garnett, and suddenly the Suns have not only their best defensive team during the Steve Nash era, but also their deepest. The Suns run over the entire league en route to an astonishing 68-14 record. Garnett and Sean Marion lead the league's number 3 overall defense, with Kevin Garnett winning Defensive Player of the Year, yet their offense is as sharp as ever, and lead the league in three-pointers. The Suns are so good, in fact, that the rest of the league has to trade desperately just to try and keep up. Boston strikes first, snagging Pau Gasol in a deal centered around Al Jefferson. The Mavericks are next as they acquire Jason Kidd from the New Jersey Nets in a deal built around Devin Harris. Just like in real life, Sean Marion became disgruntled in Phoenix and was traded to the Miami Heat for Shaquille O'Neal. This time, Miami had other plans of how they'd utilize Sean Marion and they'd actually involve him in a three-way trade. But the most shocking move of all comes on the day of the trade deadline. Well, if you don't know how you can move forward in that situation, you're still under contract with them. Are you saying right here on this show that you want to be traded? Yeah, I would, I would like to be traded, yeah. There's no, there's no if ands or buts about it. It's not a situation where what, 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 you know. I know before you reportedly said that you would like them to get Jerry West back. Are you saying now emphatically, regardless of what they've done, you want out of Los Angeles? Yeah, I would like to be traded. And it, it, as tough as it is to say that, and as tough as it is to, to come to that conclusion, um, you know, there's no other, there's no other alternative. Is there anything that the Los Angeles Lakers could do? to make you change your mind and, and, and decide not that you do not want to be traded? No. Nothing? No. With that being said, since you said that there's really nothing that they can do and, and, and them, you want them to do the right thing and the right thing in your mind is to be traded, is there a particular team that you have a preference to go to? Now, this was actually a real interview with Stephen A. Smith and Kobe Bryant. How the Lakers managed to keep Kobe was by getting Pau Gasol through a trade by the Memphis Grizzlies. But now, he's a part of the Boston Celtics since they don't have Kevin Garnett and they traded for Pau Gasol. So the Lakers end up acquiring Carlos Boozer in a last ditch effort to please Kobe Bryant. They trade away Lamar Odom and a whole bunch of first round picks and end up getting Carlos Boozer. Now this trade was actually a three way trade as well, meaning that Sean Marion was a part of Utah, Carlos Boozer was a part of LA and Lamar Odom was now a part of Miami for the second time. Of course, none of these deals have an immediate impact. The Suns dashed through the Western Conference playoffs with a 12-2 record and after a brief challenge, managed to dispatch the Eastern Conference champion Detroit Pistons in 6 games to capture that elusive first NBA championship. The offseason kicks off with a bang when the Chicago Bulls jump all the way up from the number 8 overall pick to win the draft lottery and the rights to draft Memphis point guard Derrick Rose. The Miami Heat have to settle for the number 4 overall pick after Lamar Odom leads the late season surge that sees them surrender the league's worst record to the Seattle Supersonics. 
The Sonics now, moving to Oklahoma City, grab Michael Beasley second overall, with OJ Mayo following in third. Russell Westbrook ends up in Miami. Pretty cool. Yeah, let's roll with it. The Phoenix Suns begin the season on a 29-2 start, but an injury to Kevin Garnett knocks them out of serious title contention by the end of the regular season. Either way, it was an LA Lakers versus Orlando Magic NBA Finals, and of course, Kobe Bryant still wins his first championship without Shaquille O'Neal. Remember, they still had Carlos Boozer as well. He wasn't Pau Gasol, but he was still a decent player at this point. But the crazy thing about that is the fans barely even notice. Of course, most LA fans are extremely happy about Kobe Bryant winning his first championship without Shaquille O'Neal, but most NBA fans are so wrapped up in the free agency drama that looms one year away. The 2009-2010 season ends with Phoenix taking down the defending champion, the LA Lakers, in the Western Conference Finals. In the Eastern Conference, it was still the Boston Celtics that would advance to the NBA Finals. They still had Ray Allen, they still had Rondo, Paul Pierce, but they also had Pau Gasol, who was one of the best power forwards at that time. They beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in the semifinals, they beat the Orlando Magic in the conference finals, and now in the NBA Finals, they were facing off against the Phoenix Suns. In the NBA Finals, it still went to a seven game series. Originally, it was the Lakers versus the Celtics, but now it was the Suns versus the Celtics. And if the Lakers could beat the Celtics, then I'm pretty sure this Phoenix Suns team could beat the Celtics as well. They had Steve Nash, who was arguably the best point guard in that time. They had Kevin Garnett, who was an MVP. They had Jason Richardson. They ended up getting Shaquille O'Neal through a trade. Grant Hill was on that roster. They ended up winning the NBA championship. During the offseason, Chicago manages to clear out enough cash space to sign two maximum salary free agents, and the Knicks nearly do the same. After a loss in the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers with Kobe Bryant realize that they have a superstar player on their team in Kobe Bryant, but they need some more pieces to beat Steve Nash and Kevin Garnett. So the Lakers thought if they want to keep up with Phoenix and Orlando, they'll have to find Kobe some younger help. Since remember, Gasol is part of Boston. They enter free agency with only Kobe Bryant and Ron Artest on their roster and dreams for the greatest offseason of all time. Chris Bosh seems interested in the glitz of New York or Chicago, and LeBron James is torn at the thought of ditching his hometown Cleveland. But on July 8, 2010, both LeBron James and Chris Bosh announced that they are joining Kobe Bryant in LA. Pretty crazy, I know. This is a what-if scenario. As the league ponders what kind of records this new super team might break, the defending champion Suns still loom as the NBA's top dog. Now, this is it. That's what I read the other day, and I thought it was interesting. It's definitely not realistic. If you guys want to watch some realistic what-ifs on my channel, definitely check them out. This one was just an article that I read the other day, and I thought that you guys might enjoy it. It's just a pretty cool scenario. It definitely wasn't the most realistic or the most entertaining, but it's something that I thought you guys might enjoy. So yeah, if you guys want to see some more in-depth and more realistic what-ifs, definitely go to my playlist down below. It's in the description. I'll post it in the comment section. Click on the playlist. It'll give you a whole bunch of what-if scenarios that you can find for yourself. What if Derrick Rose never got injured? What if Stephen Curry was traded to the Phoenix Suns? A whole bunch of what ifs. Click that link. You'll find the what ifs that I posted and the what ifs that I've written up. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let's see if we can reach 2,000 likes for the next video on the channel. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I make a whole bunch of NBA what ifs. I make a whole bunch of NBA videos in general, NBA history, NBA scenarios. And if you like NBA 2K17, go subscribe to my new channel. The link is also in the description. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.